Draw a fully labeled free body diagram to show all the forces acting on block A. Let's go ahead and take a look. In the pulley system below, a 3 kg block A is suspended on a rough inclined surface, as we can clearly see, forming an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. A 5 kg block B is attached by string T2, running over a frictionless pulley. Block A is attached to a fixed plate by string T1. We can clearly see T1 here, and there we have T2. We are supposed to draw a fully labeled free body diagram for the block A. Block A, let's go ahead and take a look. First things first, we need the weight, and then we're going to worry about everything else. Because the weight is always there, right? Every particle in the universe is attracted by every other particle. So we have the weight. And then is block A resting on a surface? Yes, it is. If it is resting on a surface, we expect a normal force exerted by the surface perpendicular. So there we go. We have the normal force. This tension T1 down the slope. So let's go ahead and have that. And our tension T2, okay, with T1 and T2. So this is T1 down the slope. And this is T2 up the slope what about frictional force is something said about frictional force yes block a is suspended on a rough inclined surface so we do have a frictional force let's not forget that so this is t2 and this is t1 but we also need the frictional force so we have f r there we go. I don't think we are missing anything. 4.3. Calculate the tension in the string T2. We want the tension in this string T2. T2 is acting on the 3 kg block and on the 5 kg block. Let's go ahead and see if we can use the 3 kg block to find T2. Our system is in equilibrium. There is no movement whatsoever. Right? Because the... 3 kg block is being kept at rest by T1. In the absence of T1, there shall be some movement. But because of T1, everything is at equilibrium. So let's see if we can use the 3 kg block to find the tension T2. Well, we can say that T2 is equal to the frictional force and T1. We don't have the frictional force. We don't have the coefficient at this point. And we also don't have T1. So we can't use the 3 kg block to find it here one. There's too many unknown variables. Okay, let's see if we can find T2 using the 5 kg block. So first things first, the free body diagram for the 5 kg block. So we have the weight as it is always there. And we have T2 pulling it upwards. This is for the 5 kg block. So T2 and the weight must be equal to each other if we are seeing that our system is at equilibrium or is at rest. So the weight is equal to T2, as we can clearly see. So from this, we can see that T2 is equal to the weight. So it will just be equal to 5 multiplied by 9.8, which is equal to 49 newtons. Let's go ahead and take a look at the equation that follows. String T1 is cut and the system starts to accelerate. The coefficient of friction of the inclined surface is 0.44. Okay, so we have string T1 being cut. So let's take care of that. There we go. T1 is cut. Let's go ahead and find the frictional force acting on block A. So sticking to the basics, we know fully well that the frictional force is equal to the coefficient multiplied by the normal force. We have the coefficient 0.44. All we need to do is to determine the normal force. In an inclined surface, the normal force is always equal to mg cos of theta. That is the perpendicular component of the weight. While the parallel component of the weight is mg sine of 
theta. So let's go ahead and substitute in this formula and see what we get. The coefficient 0 0.44. The mass of block A, that is 3 kgs, multiplied by the gravitational acceleration 9.8, cos of 25 degrees. So let me just go ahead and put this in my calculator and see what I get. This is 11.72 newtons. There we go. We have the frictional force. 4.4.2, the magnitude of the acceleration of the system. We want to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the system. So let's stick to the 3 kg block and see if we can use it to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the system. So we're going to have, we already have its free body diagram, right? So using F net is equals to MA on the 3 kg block. The force pulling the 3 kg block up the incline is T2. So we're going to have T2 minus all the forces that are opposing our motion. It is the frictional force and the parallel component of the weight. Fg parallel. This is equals to ma. Right. So T2, do we have T2? At this point, we don't have T2. We had T2 when we still had T1. But as soon as you cut T1, which was here, T2 will change. It is no longer going to experience the same tension force. So we have T2 minus the frictional force that is 11.72 minus fg parallel it should be easy to calculate fg parallel that is mg sine of theta so the mass is three kgs the acceleration gravitational acceleration 9.8 multiplied by sine of theta theta is 25 degrees and this is equals to ma the mass is three kgs and we have the acceleration as a we don't have a value of a at this point so we have minus 11.72 minus fg parallel so let me just substitute that in my calculator i'm getting minus 24.145 so t2 minus 24.15 is equals to 3a i have t2 been an unknown variable and i have the acceleration been an unknown variable at this point it should be obvious what we need to do this is our equation one when we use the 5 kg block we're going to have an equation two and solve simultaneously so let's go ahead and take a look the 5 kg block f net is still equals to ma the 5 kg block is going downwards, it's going towards the ground. So it is being pulled by the weight. And the T2 is opposing that motion. So weight minus T2 is equal to MA. Its weight is 49 newtons. We calculated it when we wanted to find the T2 previously. So 49, or you can just substitute it again. 5 multiplied by 9.8, that is still 49. So we have 49 minus T2 being equals to 5A. This is equation 2. So what I will do, I will add the left-hand sides of the two equations together and the right-hand sides of the two equations together. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to say that T2 minus 24.15 plus... 49 minus t2 this is equals to so this is the left hand side of equation one plus the left hand side of equation two this is equals to the right hand side of equation one plus the right hand side of equation two so t2 plus minus t2 is zero and then we have minus 24.15 plus 49 this will give us 24.85 being equals to 3a plus 5a which is 8a so we have 8a let's go ahead and divide both sides by 8 
So 24.85 divided by 8 is 3.10625. So we have our acceleration being equals to 3.11 meters per second squared. This is if we round it off to two decimal places. But that's not where it ends. We have 4.4.3 of which we are supposed to calculate the magnitude of the tension force in T2. So that is quite an easy task. You just substitute the acceleration in either equation 1 or equation 2. Let's substitute it into equation 1. Equation 1, we have T2 minus 24.15 being equals to 3a. I want to find the tension, so let me make it the subject of the formula. I'm going to have T2 being equals to 3A plus 24.15. So T2 is equals to 3 multiplied by A. Our acceleration is 3.11 plus 24.15. If you put that in your calculator, you're going to get... 33.45 newtons as your magnitude of the tension force in T2. There we go.